The goals with light. We need to talk about light before we shoot. We're going to have lunch and then we're going to work with the light. So, light is a tool. Ambient lights are ant lamps, overheads, wall sconces, windows. We got it everywhere, everywhere. Track lighting, fluorescent all around this place. We can use these hot lights that are here. Gear, car headlights, reflective light. There's so much light. It is fun if we know what we're looking for. Okay, but we need to isolate it to make it really good. Okay, isolating things. Flash or strobes, off camera flash or on camera flash and certainly strobes, okay? I don't use a lot of on-camera flash at all unless I'm bouncing one, one of my cameras at a bouncing light at a, re, at a reception. So artificial continuous, that'll be hard directional spotlight and a soft diffuse. So my gun light and my ice light that we'll be using, okay? Using the light, there's side lighting, there's so many ways to use the light, back lighting, rim lighting, ambient subtle, okay? Soft diffuse, Hard lighting, spot lighting, and mixed. So combination advanced. Hopefully we get to combination advanced today. There's definitely uh, a lot of different options in this room. So here's how you use it. It's real easy, and it's in this order. First, you're gonna find the light. I'm gonna use my hand. I know so many people that use their hand to find the light. It tells you where the face should be, okay? Oh. Right there is the face. You can tell uh, from, from that. You want the, the light to have shadows and highlights. That's perfection. Straight on like this. I'm right now because there's two lights. So this is flat light. We're going to talk about all of this at, in the, the beginning of the next section. So you find the light. You put the subject in the light. You give them a reason for being there and then click. Okay? You got to get the expression. All right? So that's where all these energy ratcheting techniques are so important. Okay? So if you have no light, what do you do? You find a background element that's interesting. Could be this wall, but there's no good quality light filling your subject. You do the same though. You mold your subject to the element. Okay, how you want them against that element. Okay, you create a foreground light. Would be video light. Could be one light, and you could do rim light from behind if you want. So you create a foreground light, and you give them a reason for being there again, and then you click. You go for the expression. Ah! Hug, it could be a micro movement, a micro motion post, squeeze, ah, click. That's how it's done. By the way, my, when there's no light, that's my favorite, favorite, favorite. I like to um, just bring in quick, quick lights, um, hot lights. So we need to understand what subtractive lighting is. That's uh, what I'm going to be doing over there. There's going to be multiple lights on in that room, just like uh, when we enter uh, any, we're problem solvers as photographers, we enter a room, there's overhead lights, there's a fluorescent light, there's window light, what do we do? We're gonna turn off the noise so that we could see the natural first, and then we can start bringing things back. Subtractive lighting, and then bring things back. Okay? So here's a no light scenario, attrition too. There's just video light there. Just video light. Just video light through, I'm passing a video light through a fern to get that pattern on the wall and light on her. Just pick up a fern, put a video light through it, and I put, uh, formed her into that light, into a lovely pose that's, that was appropriate for her body type, and then click. There's an example of the same thing from the same hot light, this is the gun light from the side, okay? There's nothing here but a wall for all these spreads, you guys. Okay, this is Trisha and Drew with the puddle giving the reflection. The puddle is that big. It's that big. And it makes that huge. We actually did uh, some shots like this in the bonus video. How do you use a silly little puddle to create a reflection? And then they're backlit with a, a gun light, and the foreground light's the street light. So all we had there was this red wall. This is another example rim light from behind, foreground from the street lamp. Okay? There's nothing here but cigar smoke with light behind them, and I used my iPhone to reflect light off of my hot light that's from behind back into their face. Okay? That's two side lights and another light through a fern to create that pattern behind. So unfortunate locations, what, we, what do we do? If we have a first church of Uglyville, as Bambi says it. Here's what we do. We use light and depth of field. Okay? Depth of field is so wonderful. F2 is so wonderful. F1.2. We don't need a good location to create sellable spreads, guys. 
We can be at the worst location ever. Just good light. We just have to have things lit well and use a simple background. I just showed you a bunch of examples that had no light at all. This is in a dark bathroom, this first one. I just took him into the bathroom. There's just a little bit of ambient light from the window, and that's it. There's another one just like that. Another one. Okay, all we have is the translucent door. We have translucent glass above us here. That's just the same stuff. Same stuff, easy. How about just a rim light? Do you see why I like dark locations? I'll just turn off the light. This is an incandescent can from directly above. And the way you get the bride's face into it is give her reason to do that, have her chin up. Why would her chin be up? Well, maybe the groom's kissing her, her neck. Okay, maybe that's the appropriate way to form them into that light, right? Or just you guys realize, even if you have the worst place, worst light, or sorry, worst location in the world, you could always shoot down. The ground is always beautiful. It's always texture. 